and it's not recording any of you guys it's recording my screen so that just in case you want this practice um, to do again on your own you can have it and we'll send you that link out uh, a little bit later today or whenever i can get it uploaded um all right so now that we have all of our fun props and things we are going to begin in a comfortable seated posture if you want to have something under the hips you're welcome to and i always like to frame this um, first seat as finding a good position for the pelvis and for baby so if knees are higher than the hips we're in a tucked position and we're kind of compressing into belly so if you know that your knees are going to be higher than your hip bones i recommend propping up with blankets or even something tall or firm like a block or bolster so that knees can be level to or even below the hip bones um, and just so that you guys <laughs> i didn't do this earlier but just so that you guys know um, my name is amber and I am a 500 hour yoga instructor. I'm also a registered prenatal yoga instructor and a yoga alliance education provider. So I've been teaching prenatal yoga since 2016, maybe a little before then, <laughs> it's been a long time. Um, and I used to teach a lot of regular weekly classes, um, but that was when I was at a studio that had like a really good prenatal program. And since moving here from St. Louis to Kansas City, um, my practice, my prenatal teaching has kind of shifted to offering this as um, more of like a private um, and one-on-one -on -one kind of coaching on how to modify your practice so that you can take any yoga class and feel confident and comfortable doing what you need to for your body. So that's kind of what I'm here for today. And in our first seat, just make sure that you're comfortable. If you're not comfortable and cross-legged, sit some, uh, some other way. You can have legs extended out. You can be in a kneeling posture, whatever works for you. And then if you're comfortable doing so, you can shut down the eyes. Or maybe you just let your gaze soften towards the floor in front of you. And check in with your posture, allowing your upper back and the back of your head to lean back against an imaginary wall, allowing your head to stack over your heart, your heart to stack over baby, and baby stacking over the pelvis. I'm taking these first few moments just to check in with how you are feeling today physically, mentally, emotionally. And do your best to observe these feelings without categorizing them as good or as bad. Instead, just coming from the mindset of collecting information so that you know what you need from practice today. You're welcome to leave your hands relaxing on your legs or in your lap. But if you'd like to start to connect to baby, you might bring one hand on lower belly and one hand on top of belly. Taking a moment to thank baby for bringing you here on this call today these other mothers and their babies. And then let your awareness travel back towards your hands on the belly. 
And start to feel that as you inhale, your belly expands into your palms. And as you exhale, belly draws away from the hands. Inhale, baby moving into your hands. And exhale, hugging baby into yourself. Feeling this gentle rocking motion. Knowing that you are rocking baby before even meeting outside of the womb. I'm going to remain in a seat for a few more minutes. So at any time, if you need to adjust, you're welcome to. I'd like to begin today with a breathing practice called the bumblebee breath. Now, our breathing practice, you're welcome to join in with your own voice. You're all on mute, so you won't be able to hear each other. But if you are not comfortable using your voice, you can just practice deep breathing instead. If you're unfamiliar with the bumblebee breath, it's similar to chanting alms, but with closed lips. And the teeth are just barely touching so that the sound and breath moving forward in your kind of hum vibrates the teeth which then sends a physical vibration through the entire body and even into baby. This is a relaxing breath that also helps us practice making noise, hearing ourselves and letting baby hear us as well. I'll demonstrate first. The bumblebee breath sounds like this. Mm -hmm. Just take an inhale and then with the exhale, you hum that noise. Now we're going to take 10 of these and you don't have to go at the same pace as me. Just go with your own breath. When you run out of air, just inhale and begin the next one. We'll start first with a nice deep collective breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. In through the nose and begin. talk a little bit more about this practice. You want the teeth to be barely touching so that that vibration can be felt. Maybe a tingling in the lips is being felt as well. And the louder you make that hum, the more vibration you can feel, the more effect, the more benefits you can feel. Mm -hmm. of your 10th bumblebee breath. 
Just allow your breath to flow naturally and evenly again. In and out through the nose. And observe how you feel. Can you witness any residual vibrations? Do you feel relaxed? Do you feel the same as you did before? If your hands are still to baby, you can start to release the hands and just relax them somewhere on the legs. And we're gonna take a few seated cat cows. So as we exhale, We'll tuck our tailbone round our spine, roll the shoulders forward and tuck the chin. As you inhale, you'll sway the spine, letting belly reach forward, rolling shoulders back, lifting chest and chin towards the ceiling. Exhale, rounding the body, kind of hugging the body around baby, protecting. Inhale and sway, create space in the front of the body for baby to stretch out. Exhale, rounding, even practicing that gentle engagement of the core, this slight drawing in of the navel. And then as you inhale, you can either relax belly muscles and let baby hang forward towards the leg. Or the next time that you inhale, if you know that you're needing to protect your low back, you might keep the navel gently drawn in towards the front of the spine so that weight of baby isn't pulling on the low back. Take one or two more of these, depending on where you're at in your breath. And then when you're ready, just come back up into a nice tall seat. Now, if you've been seated in one way for a long time, you might adjust and either cross the legs or maybe extend the legs if the hips are getting tired. We're gonna take a little bit more spinal movement. So once settled in the hips, take the arms up overhead, big stretch, interlace the fingers and push the palms up towards the ceiling. You can even lift the chin. As you exhale, twist to the right. Bring your left hand in front of you, right hand behind. Fingertips might just barely touch to the floor. Inhale and come back through center, lifting ribs up off of baby, lifting gaze and chin if you'd like. Exhaling in the other direction, tapping fingers down, one in front of you, one behind. Moving with your breath, inhaling up and through center, Exhaling, twist. Inhaling, center. And exhale, twist. And keep going, following your breath. And know that through our practice today, I'm gonna to be moving at a really slow and intentional pace, but you're welcome to move at any pace that feels right to you. If you need to slow down or you need to speed up, and take more movement, that's totally fine. Whatever body needs today. On your last twist to the left, just pause through center and bring your hands down to the chest. From here, we'll tap fingertips down next to the hips. Take a big inhale, reach left arm high. Exhale and side bend to the right. You can bend your right elbow to create a little more stretch or you could walk your right hand a little further away from it. We'll pause here. Let your bottom rib move forward towards the front of your mat. Your top shoulder rolls back, opening your chest to the ceiling. And then as you exhale, just sweep the arm down in front of you. And once the shoulder is lowered, you can kind of push off the bottom hand to come back through center. On an inhale, reach your right arm high into the air. Exhale and side bend to the left, rotating top shoulder back, opening chest to ceiling. Try to relax the jaw so that the throat and the neck is soft. And then with an exhale, gently lower top hand down in front of your body and then back through center. 
Inhale, both arms reach up nice and high. And then exhale, sweep arms down and out, grounding hands behind your hips. Might just be fingertips. You can lean back and we're gonna sweep our legs around and come to our first tabletop position, hands and knees. If you are on a hard surface like me on a hardwood floor, you might use a blanket under your knees. Um, also for prenatal yoga, we do a lot on hands and knees. So sometimes I recommend practicing with more than one mat under you. Um, but it just depends on what you have available to you at home. Spread the fingers wide under the shoulders and hips, we're gonna take a little bit wider than hip distance. If you're in your first trimester, that's not as important, but as we get further along, we always wanna create space in the pelvis. So wider knees is always a better option. Again, we're gonna take those cat-cow movements, swaying with the inhale, expanding through the front of the body, relaxing baby towards the earth. And then as you exhale, tuck your chin, tuck your tailbone, and hug baby up and in towards your spine. Again, if you're protecting low back, as you sway, you might keep the navel gently drawn in. Exhaling to practice that engagement. But you can also think about the belly muscles acting as a hammock for baby, just to relax in as you sway and then using those abdominal muscles to hug baby in. Take one more round here. And then next time you exhale, if your knees aren't already wide, go ahead and widen the knees to the edges of the mat. Bring your big toes together and then start to sit the hips back to the heels. Baby will nestle in between the thighs. Your forehead can come all the way down to the mat, or you can stack the forearms and rest the head onto the arms. Now here, we're gonna take a couple deep breaths. I always encourage open mouth exhales when you can to release tension, to release heat in the body. Take one more round. And then on an inhale, outstretch the arms, draw your body forward back towards that tabletop position. From here, if your knees are still as wide as the edges of the mat, you might bring them in slightly, but again, keep them wider than hips. And we're gonna practice what is called a prenatal vinyasa. Um, or a prenatal chaturanga. So our hands are going to stay under our shoulders as opposed to coming into a modified plank. And from here, hips will stay over knees. As I exhale, bending elbows towards the ribs and hovering the chest a couple inches off of the ground. Notice that my hips are still pretty much over knees. And then I push the floor away and lift up into a suede sign or my cow pose. Then from there, exhale, rounding spine, tucking tailbone into cat, arching the back. And then sink the hips back towards the child's position, but maybe not lowering all the way down. From here, elbows can bend. I can scoop my chest through arms, push and lift back up into that suede spine. Exhale and just come back to neutral. Okay, we're gonna do that whole thing again. It's a little long, but following the breath. So on an inhale, then exhale, bend the elbows, lead the chest towards the floor. Squeeze the elbows in, nice strong shoulders. Push into the hands, lifting chest, sway the spine, lift that tailbone up. Then as you exhale, tuck tailbone, tuck chin, hug baby in. And let the hips sink back slightly towards child's pose, stretching the low back. Soften the elbows, scoop the chest through the arm, and push into the floor to lift back up, sway its spine. Exhale, neutral, just a long good core. Let's go one more round of that. On an inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, bend elbows, hover the chest, elbows in. Inhale, lift and sway the spine, roll shoulders back. Exhale, tuck 
unround and sink towards heels slightly. Last time, scooping chest through low to high and then lengthen spine. Okay, from here, let's bring the knees in closer together under the hips so that we can create um, a more centered line of gravity, more balanced for ourselves as we go into um, balanced postures. So hands will still be right under shoulders, but this time as you inhale, straighten your right knee and touch the toes down behind you. So one leg is extended, one leg is still bent. Then from there, engage lower belly with your exhale, hug baby in, and then inhale again and raise that right leg up into the air. From here, on another inhale, you could try inchworming your left hand forward or kind of walking the left fingers forward, finding some extension. At any point, if you need to tap the toes down for rest, you can. On an inhale, you might try lifting left arm high, limbs extending in opposite directions. As you exhale, check in with the belly, make sure you're strong and engaged in the core. One more breath here, charging through the right hand, keeping right shoulder away from ear. And then on an exhale, tap hand and toe down, keep the limbs long. And then slide your left hand back under the shoulder. We're gonna pivot on the left knee, taking the left foot off of the mat, circle the right heel down to line up with your left foot and left hand. And then right hand can come to the hip, or you can raise right arm into the air for a modified side plank. Tuck the tailbone towards your right heel, pressing baby and pelvis forward. On an exhale, bring your right hand down back under your shoulder, and then just draw the knees back together under you, okay? From your tabletop position, widen the knees and sink hips back to child's pose, forehead to the mat or to the arms. Take three deep breaths here. Remembering what it is that you need from your practice today. Really letting go with that last exhale. And then on an inhale, draw yourself forward back to tabletop. We're gonna do that same balance series again. So knees will come closer underneath us, thighs almost touching. Right hand is right under the shoulder. On an inhale, extend left leg back, touching toes down behind you, knees lifted off the ground. From here, engage the lower belly. Inhale, raise the left leg up. Exhale, check in with the core. Inhale, extend the right arm out. Fingertips might still be connected to floor. Make sure you feel steady and balanced before trying to inhale the right arm up, level to shoulder. We take a full breath, lifted in this position, lengthening through limbs, strong core on the exhale. And then when you're ready, tap the fingers and toes down, keeping the limbs long. We'll then slide the right hand back under shoulder, spreading fingers wide. We'll pivot on our right knee, turning the right foot off of the mat, and then circle left heel down to line up the left foot with the right knee and hand. Left hand can come to find the left hip or reach the left arm up into the air. Shoulders are stacking, hips are stacking over the grounded knee. Core is engaged, helping for balance. On an exhale, bring the left hand down under shoulder. Let the knees come back together under your hips. And from here, extend arms out slightly, walking hands out in front of you, keeping hips over knees, and maybe let the chest and the head come down towards the floor. Again, knees are a little wider than the hips at this point. So this is our puppy's pose, so if at any point, down dog doesn't feel good to you. You can come to puppy's pose instead. And you can also take puppy's pose with forearms down. It's a little less effort in the upper body, but still just as effective as lengthening the spine. 
Okay. When you're ready, you'll walk your hands back, but keep the hands slightly forward in front of the shoulders, just barely an extension through the arms. Tuck your toes under. And then from here, we're gonna push into the hands. Again, knees are wide so that we can send hips back to heels without compressing baby against the thighs. Stretching the bottoms of the feet for a breath. On an inhale, let your hands take more of your weight as you shift forward. And then exhale, push into hands and toes. Lift the knees up off the mat. Hug baby in. One breath here. And then on your next inhale, lift your tailbone up to the sky, reaching chest through the arms. Your knees can stay bent, but let's widen the feet. Take the feet wider than hips, or if you're further along, maybe as wide as the mat. Okay, broaden your shoulders. One more big inhale. Open mouth, exhale. <sighs> inhale, high up onto toes. Shift your shoulders forward over hands as you bend the knees and with control, lower knees back to the mat. Okay, from here, we're going to find our blocks. Again, you can take this motion without blocks, but especially as you get further along and belly gets bigger, um, having props like blocks is going to just make things more accessible. So if you're using traditional blocks, they have more than one height. They have the lowest height, the middle height, the tallest height. This is usually really great for creating space, but not so sturdy. I like to have something in between, kind of a, mid, a middle height available. Um, but make sure whatever prop you're using is sturdy. And instead of having blocks or hands shoulder distance apart, we're actually gonna take them a little closer together under the chest so that there's space on either side of our props. And then we'll also draw the knees closer together. And similar to what we did before, inhale and extend, um, let's do left leg so I can demonstrate this well for you. Left leg back first. Exhale, engage the core. Inhale, raise the leg up, level to hip. And this time on an exhale, you're gonna swing the knee out to the side and then pull the knee up towards the shoulder like you're doing a side crunch. Inhale and kick the leg back. You can keep the leg lifted or tap the toe down. On your next exhale, side crunch, pull the knee up towards your left shoulder. And then inhale, extend, and re-level the pelvis. Hugging baby in the whole time, moving with your breath. Okay, let's take one more. Pull the knee up as close to the shoulder as you can, and then step your foot forward to the outside of your hand or block. Now, take your time to get the foot there. And you'll notice that my knees are kind of in these 90 degree angles. This is okay to be in, but if you wanna find a deeper low lunge, you'll start to inchworm that left foot forward towards the top of your mat, finding a little bit of extension through the knee. And then you'll walk your hands or props forward in line with foot, sink the pelvis forward so that your left knee comes back over the ankle, and all of a sudden you're in this deeper lunge, you might be feeling a deeper stretch somewhere in the body. You can raise up onto fingertips or onto a taller level of your props if that's available. And just start to push the feet down into the floor and then draw the knees towards each other like you're squeezing something in between the legs. That'll create a really stable lower body so that if you want, you could place the hands on the left thigh and press the self up into low crescent. If you feel balanced here, you can stay, or you can bring the hands back down if your balance feels off today. Or you could try reaching arms up into the air, challenging your balance, keep that engagement in the lower body, but really breathe deep on the inhale, lift the ribs up away from baby. On an exhale, we'll all take the time to bring hands back to thigh, and then back down to top or floor. From here, we'll straighten our left leg, send the hips back towards the right heel. You might lift the left toes towards the ceiling. Breathe into the back of that thigh. If you're protecting your back today, walk your hands or your props closer to your hips to keep a more long and lifted spine. On another inhale, you'll shift forward back into your lunge. 
And then we're gonna move back into our tabletop position. So we'll shift hips back just enough to stack over right knee. Hands will come back under the chest. And then we push into our hands and swing the left knee back to meet the right. You can keep your props under hands, otherwise take them out of the way. And we're gonna come back into that um, down dog position. So nice extension through arms, tuck the toes, move from a place of control, exhaling as you charge into hands and toes, Float the knees first, engage belly, and then inhale, lift the hips high. Feet are wider than hips, maybe even as wide as the mat. From here, you could pedal the feet out, bending one knee at a time, swaying hips side to side. Shake the head, yes and no, relax tension in the upper body and shoulders. And then with lots of control, inhale up onto the toes, bend the knees as you shift forward and down to tabletop. Let's locate our props if you're using them under the chest, bringing them in a little closer than shoulder distance. Knees will come closer together as well. We're gonna take that same um, crescent sequence on the other side. So take an inhale, extend the right leg back. Exhale, engage the belly before you go anywhere else. Inhale, lift the leg up. And then exhale, side crunch, swing the right knee out to the side and then up towards your right shoulder. Inhale, kick back, reflex the foot as you level the, hel uh, the hips. Exhale, swing open, draw the knee up towards your shoulder. Inhale, extend back. Keep baby hugged in the whole time. Okay, we go one more, hugging the knee up as close to the shoulder as you can and stepping right foot forward to the outside of your hands or props. This might be where you stay if this feels really balanced to you or start to inchworm your right foot forward, top of the mat, walk your hands or blocks forward and sink the hips forward so that right knee comes over right ankle again. Once again, you can stay low here or raise up onto fingertips by more stretch through the hip flexor on the left side, rolling shoulders back, opening chest. Okay, from here, belly is on the inside of the thigh. Start to push down through the feet, engage the hips, squaring them to the front of the mat. You can stay with hands low or start to press into your right thigh, letting shoulders stack over hips. You could also play with your balance, reaching arms nice and high, maybe lifting your gaze to challenge yourself. Keep the lower body steady and stable. On an exhale, hands will come back down nice and slow with control. And then we come to our half split. We straighten the right leg, send the hip back towards the left foot. Hands can come back to support the spine or you can keep the arms forward, kind of bowing over the front leg or between the legs. One more breath here, flexing right ankle. And use an inhale to shift forward into your low lunge again. Now, instead of transitioning out the way we did before, this time we're going to tuck our left toes, lift the left knee up into a high lunge, and then circle the left heel down, letting your left toes face the long edge of your mat. From here, bring your right forearm onto your right thigh and raise your left arm up, very similar to that um, side plank we did earlier, okay? And then your left hand can come down to your hip, engage the belly, draw the navel in, and then push into your right foot, and raise open into your T. This is a warrior two stance. If this feels really strenuous or your balance is off today, you can always heel toe that back foot a little closer to your front foot. Take a shorter stance. Arms can be wide or if arms are tired, you can release them onto hips instead. We're gonna pulse in and out of this front leg. Inhale, straighten front leg. Exhale, bend. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend. One more time. 
And then as you sink into that front knee, you're gonna keep your left hand on your hip, reach your right arm up and back. Now pressing into the left hip supports the spine in this side bend. If you want a little more, or you could slide the left hand down the leg. Keep your right knee deeply bent. Draw baby in. Move from a place of control as you reach back out, arms into your T. Let's inhale, straighten the right leg. Hands will come to hips if not already there. And if you have props inside that right foot, that's okay. We're gonna pivot on the feet, kind of taking your props maybe so that your toes face the long edge of your mat, okay? From here, where our feet are in a nice wide stance, again, if this feels like too much, you can always shorten the stance, bring the feet a little closer, all right? So let's turn the toes out now towards the corners of the mat. Take a little practice bend in the knees. You want your knees to be pointing towards your second toes. If they're not, you might need to turn the feet out a little wider. Let's bring hands down onto the thighs, right above the knees, and sit the hips as low as you can, maybe level to the knees, okay? From here, on your exhale, you're gonna lower your left shoulder down, bend your right elbow to twist in this torso. Inhale, straighten both arms, lift the chest up. Exhale, right shoulder comes down, bend the left elbow. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, center. Exhale to the left, keep those hips low. Center. One more time, each side. Make sure your weight is staying back in the heels. Your hips are behind your heels. Try not to let your weight come forward into the toes. Okay, and then as you come through center for the final time, you can start to straighten your knees, let your hands slide down your legs, or maybe you'll find those blocks or whatever props you're using and bring them under the hands. Okay, turn your toes in as if you're like pigeon toes, so they're kind of, big toes are kind of inward. And then you can keep more of an upright spine or you could just relax the upper body down, let belly hang in between the thighs. Head hangs towards the floor, releasing arms if you want. Press into the insides of the feet and draw the thigh bones up into the hip sockets, engaging the legs so that the upper back can kind of just drop out of the pelvis a little more. Hug baby in with your next exhale. And inhale, raise the chest back up. From here, we're just going to transition to the other side. So start to turn your left toes to the back of your mat. Right toes will stay facing the long edge. And then we can walk or slide the hands over to the left foot. And from here, bring your left forearm onto left thigh. Open the chest as you raise right arm up into the air. From here, engage your belly. Push off the left foot and raise to warrior two on this side. Again, you could heel toe your right foot a little closer to left if you need a shorter stance for balance. Hands can always be on hips if you'd rather. We'll pulse in and out of our left leg. Straighten the left leg. And exhale, bend, sink. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, sink. One more time. Good. Now stay bended in that, bent in that front leg. Right hand will come to the hip. Left arm reaches up into the air and then over to the front of the mat so that your uh, arm is alongside your ear in a side bend. Keep the left knee bent. If you want to slide your right hand down the leg, you can. To make sure the spine and belly feel supported. Hug baby in using your core and inhale out. Arms back in our T or to the hips, okay? From here, hands will come down to hips. We'll inhale, straighten the left leg. Turn the toes so that our toes are facing long edge of mat again. And then we're just going to turn to face the front of the mat. So pivoting on the right foot, bend into the right knee. One forearm could come onto the thigh if you need. 
but then just bring hands down onto the floor or maybe onto props that are available to you. Lift your back heel up into a high lunge and just lower that left knee back down, okay? From here, shift your hips back, maybe walk hands or props back under the chest and then pull right knee back to meet the left. Ooh, that was a lot of standing stuff. So let's take the knees nice and wide into a child's pose, big toes together. Sit the hips back and down, releasing into that child's pose for rest. A few deep breaths here. Last big exhale. And as you're ready, this time, walk the hands back towards the hips, coming up and out into a seat or a kneeling position. We're gonna come again into a seat, so find something that feels good to you. And then um, using any props available, let's go ahead and find our strap. So whatever you're using, and we're going to wrap up here in a little bit, but whatever you're using, you want to make sure that you can take the hands shoulder distance or a little bit wider than shoulder distance um, and have kind of some resistance. So you can pull and it's not going to stretch too much that your arms are like way open. You want to have your hands when you pull um, right about shoulder distance apart. Okay, so take your time, and when you grab your prop, we're also going to keep the knuckles turned forward so that the wrists are flat and parallel to the ceiling. So hands are going to be shoulder uh, level, and actively pull the hands apart. Feel the shoulders fire on. They're working right now just to be here and engaged. And then from here, we're going to keep the elbows lifted and pull our prop into our chest. Keep pulling the strap apart like you're stretching a rubber band. And then push forward, straightening the arms. Exhale, pulling in. Inhale, straighten. We're going to keep this up for about three minutes. And this is to simulate that, you know, you can be strong and you can do something that's challenging for multiple minutes, because guess what? You're gonna be going through contractions at some point. And you need to know that you can control how you feel in times of difficult um, sensation. So if your shoulders are on fire, your elbows wanna drop, your hands are getting tired, just breathe. Inhale as you extend, exhale pulling in. Keep going, you're gonna wanna take a break, but don't. We also need to do practices like this to strengthen our upper body, right? Like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna be carrying a heavy baby around for a long time after giving birth. A Little bit longer. You can do it, you're almost there. Keep pulling that prop apart. Keep those elbows high. Try not to speed up. Keep the breath steady, you're in control of that. Few more rounds of breath. You got this. Give me three more. Last one, pull it in. Straighten it out, keep those arms up. And then exhale, release it down. All right, let's throw that prop away. <laughs> and we're gonna take a couple shoulder rolls. So inhale, reach the shoulders up towards the ears. Exhale, roll them back and down. 
Inhale, forward and up. Exhale, down. A few more of those. All right, from here, just let your hands relax again on your lap, or maybe you can bring hands back to belly. You can shut down the eyes or again, find that still gaze at the floor or the tip of your nose. Let your awareness travel back towards your breathing. Maybe noticing your heart rate. And do your best here to elongate your exhales. Helping to slow your heart rate down. And to calm the nervous system. Once again, bringing your awareness towards baby. And thanking baby for bringing you here into this practice. Bringing you into an environment that allows you to explore yourself physically, emotionally, energetically, and mentally. Sending thanks to baby, but also sending all of your warmth and love. Be sharing with baby internally how excited you are to meet them. You can keep your hands on baby or you can start to bring your hands together at the center of your heart, letting the thumbs touch to the middle of the chest. Bowing your face gently towards your fingertips or towards baby. And thinking also internally all the other women and their babies who are on this call with you today, sharing in this practice and sharing in this journey towards motherhood, the light and the love within me honors and reflects the light and love with each of you. Namaste. Thank you so much for moving through that practice with me. Um, we did not do any like floor stretches or shavasana because I wanted to leave time for our discussion. Um, but if you do have questions about ways to take shavasana um, or postures that you can do reclined or on your back, I'm happy to answer those questions as well and even demonstrate for you guys as needed. So um, at this point, Taylor, if you would like to formally introduce yourself, um, you're welcome to. And we can kind of move into the Q&A um, portion of this um, gathering today. Hi, guys. I'm Taylor. Um, some of you guys know me through yoga. I am a yoga instructor, too, but not... Um, certified in prenatal, just anecdotally through my own pregnancy. <laughs> um, I don't know about you, but I got a lot of value out of that practice, um, not even being pregnant. Um, so thanks, Amber. And I am a birth doula here in Kansas City and a just an advocate of wellness and um, information and education. Um, and I just want to kind of open this up for you all to ask 
um, any questions that you have um, about your pregnancy or about um, any particular choices or options um, that you might have heard of or <laughs> that just seem, I mean, I know that right now it's just, it's not only are you going through something that maybe your body hasn't gone through before, or maybe it has, but it's still new because every pregnancy is different, but it's also just kind of a weird time in our world right now where we might have extra questions or extra stress, um, and we just we've got to be really, really, um, want to say mindful, but diligent even about taking care of our mental health as, a, as well as our physical health um, during this extra stressful time um, because stress does go to baby and we want to just do everything we can to relieve some of that stress for you guys. <laughs> so. Yeah, and if you have questions about prenatal yoga specifically, I'm here to answer those. I know that I have been kind of, and this might not be like a super professional question that anybody has like any expertise on, but um, yeah, so my husband and I moved here um, almost a year ago. It'll be a year in June from Georgia, so pretty far away, and most of our like friends and family are still in Georgia, so obviously with everything that's going on right now in the world, um, we are probably not going to be like having the people that we thought we were going to be having around for like those initial like first few weeks with baby and stuff like that. Um, just because our due date is like late August, early September. And even without COVID, that's like the beginning of flu and RSV season for babies. And we don't want to like play around with any of that stuff on the heels of COVID, obviously. So I guess just like finding, especially for like mental health, because I know that I'm somebody that struggles with anxiety and panic disorder. And I know that I'm like already kind of not prepping myself in a bad way, <laughs> like dooming myself, but just mentally preparing the like postpartum depression or postpartum anxiety, like might be something that I deal with and struggle with. So I guess just like finding support here in Kansas City without necessarily being able to like go to mom's groups or like stuff like that. How do we, I guess, like plug in with each other and meet other moms? Cause this is my first time ever being, <laughs> you know, becoming a parent. So it's, you know, a lot of new things all at once and not a whole lot of actually being able to go out and get information like outside of my home for that. So I guess just any tips that you guys have about that sort of thing would be super helpful. So I have a couple of groups um, and Amber and I talked about maybe if you guys are willing to drop your emails in the chat, um, we can send you um, potentially the recording of this video, any other resources that we talk about on this call, that will be an easy way for us to get you guys um, these resources. Um, I know a couple of groups that are in the, they're working on transitioning everything more virtually. Um, they were doing physical meetups, obviously not right now, um, because I think, I think support is like number one. <laughs> um, so, I think having maybe if you guys are willing, just for those of you that are here on this call, you guys are similar. Um, you're all like within probably a couple months pregnant of each other. Using this as a resource. Um, also, I think seeking out potentially looking into a doula or a postpartum doula if you're not going to be able to have family coming and supporting you after baby comes. Um, and also plugging in, I think information is the biggest stress relief <laughs> that you can give yourself. The more you know, the more 
I think, I think fear stems from a lack of knowing. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like anytime it's like, I'm just going to give the example of like a job interview, like say it's a job that you really, really wanted and <laughs> you're like, but I don't know if I got it, but I don't know if like, what if, what if, what if, but then once you know, you didn't get it, like, even though that might suck, you're like, Oh, like at least I know now. And so I kind of think that way about information. Like you might have to find information about some scenarios that might not be all that pleasant. Um, and I don't want you to add stress, but I think learning about things is going to help you navigate that stress so much. Um, and also, and I can send some really great podcasts, um, a couple great books. And within those, you will also find resources um, and community, I think, as well. Amber? Yeah, and um, I was just going to touch on what we kind of discussed yesterday together. Um, we were talking about, um, we were talking about, like, daily routines that you can have for yourself that are just ensuring, you know, your wellness and your mental wellness and, um, uh, also incorporating things like nutrition, um, because whether we realize it or not, like a foundation of good whole food nutrition has a lot to do with the hormone balances in our body and can be very preventative as far as like the postpartum just, um, depression and those types of things go. So, we have a lot of um, resources that we would love to share with you um, and just know that like that's why we're here and if you guys want to meet up more often um, we are willing to do that and we can figure out what that looks like just so that we still have this kind of virtual community and we can invite in and we can grow this as as we need to um, but just know that there are tons of resources available to you I can send like breathing practices. We can send um, like Taylor said podcasts. We can do a talk on prenatal nutrition and postnatal nutrition if you want to. Um, these things, we kind of just need to know what you guys need from us so that we know what to offer you. Did that kind of answer your question a little bit? I know community is hard right now because yeah. we can't, like a lot of the, the groups that I am aware of aren't meeting up physically, but I think just if you guys are willing to connect with each other. Um, yeah. And a, like staying part. plugged into these types of um, things that are, are happening online is just a great way to feel like you're not alone. And it's a great way to just realize that you have um, other people that are going through the same things as you and can kind of like hold your hand or share their experience and, and make you feel a little bit more comfortable like you're not alone. Um, so yeah, we, thank you for those of you who are sharing your emails in the chats. We're definitely going to take a screenshot of that before we get off and we will um, send out some of that. Does anybody have anything? I want to be mindful of time. So at any time, if you need to hop off, you're welcome to. Um, I think this is going to try to kick us off here in a few minutes, but we'll keep it rolling for as long as you guys need. Um, but does anybody have any other specific questions maybe about themselves or um, about something else that is kind of broad in general like that that we can address for you? Um, I think another thing that is something maybe we don't, you guys don't have to address right now, but the classes, I know a lot of them are going online. And so do you have any recommendations for online classes? I'm pretty comfortable with kids, but my husband has never held a baby over two. And so he's really worried about not getting to do parenting classes and like having to have me teach him everything, which he, even though he loves me, he doesn't want me telling him everything. <laughs> and so I, again, that'd be like a resource that would be nice. Yeah, Mallory, I have um, a couple great ones. I will actually drop them in the chat. So the Birthful podcast is one of my favorites, and it is hosted by a woman named, Andre named Adriana Losada, and she has a postpartum preparation course, 
Um, and it's like a six week course, but you can take it at your own pace. You, and you get the modules forever. So you can watch them now, have your husband watch them now, and then you can watch them again once the baby is born to kind of refresh your memory. And it's amazing because she's not just teaching you how to change a diaper and stuff like that, but she's really, um, she gets into you really learning the baby that you got because everybody wants to tell everybody how to be a parent, but everybody gets the baby that they get. And it's not necessarily the baby that you thought you were going to get. I mean, you were like, oh, it's going to be a good sleeper and then it's not or whatever. <laughs> but she's really realistic and I really, really like that. Um, and then in terms of an online um, birthing class, the one that I highly recommend is the evidence-based birth um, birth class. They are all online now. Um, and I will drop those in the chat too here in a second. And um, I don't know the cost on any of those though. I know that they're not free. That's perfect. Thank you. Oops. I just <laughs> All right. Good questions. Anyone else? Um, real quick before we hop off, which I'm, I think I'm just going to let this run until it kicks us off. <laughs> um, but before we go, and as you guys, like, if anything comes up, feel free to, like, interrupt me and ask, ask your questions. But I do want to just give you guys a few um, uh, general, like, shavasana, like, postures that you guys can take. Whether you're doing prenatal practice, like a prenatal yoga practice, or whether you're just needing, like, more comfortable ways to lay in bed or on the couch, or, um, you know, if something's bothering you, um, I'm going to give you a couple of these postures so that you can get into them whenever you need. Um, so one of a really common one is a reclined back bend, which is if you're using pillows, I recommend doubling up or using something a little firmer than bed pillows. If you have um, like a couch cushion or something you can do, but we always want to roll instead of like, crunching up and down because we don't want to isolate the rectus abdominal muscles because we don't want to tear anything there. So especially as you get further along. So whenever you're moving into practices like this, um, always set the hips up right against the prop, lower down onto your side first, and then roll onto your back. And again, have your hips right up against the base of whatever prop you're using. And this is a great way, especially if you have something firmer that you can like elevate, is a great way to take a reclined position where you're on your back, but you're not on your back. Um, and that lower back support of that prop being right there feels really, really nice, um, especially if you can't sleep on your back. Now from there, and again, if anybody needs to interrupt me, feel free to do it. I'm just moving through this um, so that you have it. And, Another good one is a sideline position. And what I like to do is have um, usually something firm or tall towards the very back of my mat or whatever I'm laying on. And then you can have something, depending on how far, far along you are. If you're a little further along, you might want something bigger. If you're not so far along, you might just want something smaller like a rolled towel or folded blanket. And you want to have about six to eight inches in between those two props. And you can also have something under the hip or in between the legs um, if you need more space in the pelvis or if your top hip or knee is bothering you. But that bottom arm is going to come in between the props. And then you just have that rolled blanket or towel or something in the soft spot, which is just supporting baby a little bit here. And you can even fold or just to bring underbelly for more support if baby is kind of heavy and pulling down towards the ground. And the reason that you have that space in between those two props is so that 
your body weight is elevated a little bit off of that bottom shoulder because a lot of times when we're sleeping in bed at night and we're on like one side forever, that bottom arm falls asleep, which isn't good for our um, nerves. So having elevation under the belly and under the head takes that pressure off of the nerves. So you don't wind up having like shoulder issues and stuff like that. Um, another really good one is our supported child's pose. And this is probably not one that you're gonna be sleeping in obviously, but it's a good one to come to if you're having like lower back pain and um, hips need some stretching, but you can't be here comfortably for many minutes. And what I like to do is have something, for me personally, under my ankles. So I like to just roll or fold up a little bit of a blanket or a towel. And I always keep something under my knees because for me personally, this feels better to my joints. And so that rolled part is coming into like the bend or the top of the foot of my ankle so that um, there's less pressure there on the floor. Knees are nice and wide, and then that bolster or whatever props you're using are going to come under the chest, but not under the belly, because again, we want to always have space for baby. So baby is going to come in between the thighs, but chest can come down onto props, and you can also like raise your props as much as you need to to come towards you to feel supported. And this is a really great place to be. Um, if you just need to stretch that low back for like a few minutes at a time, but you need more support to be there for that long. Um, another one, if you're comfortable being on your back, is a legs up the wall variation. You can also do this with a chair. And um, you can also support under the back if you're not comfortable being on your back. So what that would look like, and I'll just use the wall um, because I have one right next to me but you can use this on a chair as well. And you probably are going to want to have one or two blankets stacked underneath you as the breasts get bigger and milk starts to move in. Um, having something under the chest is going to be supportive in any inversion so that when you go upside down, the boobs aren't like really smothering you, right? Um, it also is gonna create more space under the ribs so that if baby is kind of high up in the ribs, opening the rib cage in this position is gonna feel more comfortable and you'll be able to breathe better. So what I like to do is set up so that when I lay down, my shoulder lines up with the edge of that blanket and my shoulder is right in line with the edge. The blanket's not coming under my head at all. And then from there, again, I roll onto my back my feet can come against the wall. I notice that my hips are not right against the wall. That's okay. And then from here, I can either just extend legs up or if I'm not comfortable being on my back or that's too much pressure on the lower body, I can have my bolster or any props available to me. I can push my feet into the wall or into the chair, raise my hips up and nestle that prop either under the low back so that my hips come down or I can have that prop under the hips so that my hips are actually elevated above my heart. And then I can do whatever feels comfortable to the legs, okay? So if you're using a chair, obviously the legs are gonna be in more like a bent position, but with wall, you can do lots of different things. And Amber, can I that, add something to this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have, I got a lot of prenatal massages when I was pregnant, which I highly recommend all of you do. Um, oh yeah, please do that. <laughs> and one thing that she always did was if flat on the back, she would elevate one hip. Okay. Is that something that you have done or? Um, I think that that would be beneficial depending on if there's any conditions happening in the body, because obviously if there's something going on um, where having an unbalanced pelvis or being in an asymmetrical position is going to cause issues, then um, I, I wouldn't it was, do that. I think it was more so just to avoid being flat on my back for too long of a period. Yeah. And again, these positions you're probably not going to be in forever. Um, you might be in them for a couple of minutes, which is totally safe. Um, laying on the back is, is something you don't want to do 
um, for like hours at a time. That's kind of what we're referencing um, in case you're wondering, because when you're in a massage, you're usually on your back for a pretty long duration. So, um, but yeah, if, if you have anything going on where the pelvis can't be level, then I would avoid doing something like that. But having something under the hips or under the back is usually comfortable and, and releases um, that need for, um, it do doesn't create that compression that we're trying to avoid. Um, let's see, somebody put something in the chat. I wanna read it really quick. It was probably- Yeah, oh. no, I'm gonna, it was Caitlin. I'm definitely gonna send this to you guys, absolutely. Um, okay, yeah, and if you haven't checked the chat yet, Taylor has a bunch of those um, groups in the chat already, but we'll send those out in our email as well. Um, so those are just a few um, postures that you can get into if you're needing some relaxation, especially um, if you start to have, you know, like edema or swelling, being in any type of inversion is going to do, is going to help that a lot. So taking, you know, just, even if it's as little as five minutes a day to, to go upside down in some way, do that. Um, inversions are great for us whether we're pregnant or not. So I always recommend going upside down in any way that you can on a regular basis. Did that stir up any questions for anybody? We have a couple more minutes, I think, before it's gonna kick us off. Okay, I have a question and it's, um, so I work, I work from home right now, obviously, probably like most everyone else, but I work um, in front of a computer. My job is very much like a, a desk job. And um, I'm just like, I'm so uncomfortable, I think all day. And I do try to get up and walk around and stretch and everything during the day, but I'm still basically like on a computer for about eight hours every day. So I guess my question, I don't know, this is maybe like, really dumb but would you guys recommend like doing like using an exercise ball or something as compared to a chair or do you think is there like some magical chair do you, that you think would be helpful to that or or anything because I feel like my back is just constantly killing me um well from a yoga stand standpoint I I mean there are like really awesome expensive prenatal ergonomic chairs that you can buy. So if that is within your budget and something that feels accessible to you, you can do that. Um, but yes, doing something like a, a yoga ball is, um, even if it's not all day long, if it's just for like a portion of your day, it can help a lot. Um, those are also really great for uh, helping with core stability and, and balancing the pelvis as well. Um, but also there are like postures that that you can take if you're not able to do like a full yoga practice. And I know you said you get up and stretch and stuff like that, but there's postures you can do just to kind of counteract what you're doing in seated postures all day long. Um, and like, for instance, back bends are gonna be probably really beneficial to you. Now, we do need to be careful in back bends as we get further along. We wanna make sure that they're shallow um, and supported with that gentle core engagement but back bends are going to counteract all of like the seated and hunched stuff that you're doing. Um, you also want to focus a lot on upper body because what happens in the upper body re reflects the lower body and vice versa. So making sure that if you're rounding through the shoulders and stuff during the day, that maybe you're coming to um, a wall and I can demonstrate here that maybe you're coming to a wall having one hand and then turning away from the shoulder. That is a really, really great practice to do. You can also do it with a bent elbow. And the closer you are to the wall, the more intense it is, further away from the wall, less intense it is. But that's a really great way just to counteract the upper body thing that's happening when you can't do stretches like that on the floor. Um, back bends can look like camel's pose. If you're not familiar with that, it's where you're like, pushing hips forward or having hands down and stuff, that can be really challenging though. So one thing that I like to offer, um, okay, bye, I think somebody was hopping off. Um, one thing that I like to offer is a supported sphinx pose. And supported sphinx 
depending on what props you have available. You want to have something that um, is level. So like both props are level to each other. And this might not be because these pillows are kind of squishy. But what you do is come behind them. Again, there's space between the props for belly. And then what you do is put your knees right against that first prop. You're going to lay your thighs down. Belly is going to come in between. And then forearms come onto that front prop. So this is a really efficient and great way to take a back bend where you're not laying on your back. You're not using too much effort if you're just needing to like stretch for a couple of minutes. And then coming out, you just ground the hands, tuck the tailbone so that you're moving from a place of control and then walk yourself out. I would love to add something here, um, something that helped me a lot. because I was on my feet a lot, which is different, but I think any stagnant pose for too long is gonna have similar effects, whether it's standing or sitting. And I don't know if I'm going to try to make it so you can see me here. Um, but if you could raise your computer, maybe onto the kitchen counter even, and put one leg up. Um, so even, I mean, this is like doing these, whether you're at a computer or not, where your knee is perpendicular to your body and just going side to side. Like what Amber said, that's kind of going to counterbalance the pain, but like while you're working all day, I think elevating a leg or having like I would I loved having um, my leg at an angle, like in a standing pigeon position almost. Like a standing pigeon, yeah. So depending yeah. on how your hips are feeling, you this might be too high, um, but finding something that you could do slightly like a standing pigeon and tuck your pelvis under slightly because like, yeah, like we talked about many times throughout this class, like the more your belly grows, the more you're like, it's going to pull. So your low back is getting all of that extra strain. So tucking your pelvis slightly and just trying out some different, and when this gets old and this leg gets tired, then just swapping it out. Um, that would be a great, I think, option just while you're working. And then after you're done working, you can do all of those other great things. Yeah. And it takes a lot of, those positions take a lot of that pressure off of the pelvis as well, which is really essential throughout the day. Um, so hope that helped. Um, thank you for everybody who hopped on today. And for those of you who are still with us. Um, we're going to do our best to send as many resources out as possible, but what we would love, love, love from you guys is just feedback on, you know, what you took away from this, what you maybe need more of, and if you, if you um, have ideas of like, you know, I want to get together and do that nutrition talk, or I just need to gather and have like a mommy meet up and be like, oh my god, this is what I'm feeling this week, is anybody else feeling this? Um, we are happy to, to facilitate that for you guys, but we need to know what you need first. So, um, thank you so much and we'll all connect soon and have you're a good You're not in this alone. <laughs> no, you're not in this alone. <laughs> um, thank you yeah, guys. We'll all connect soon. Thank you so much. Thanks you guys. So glad you guys all hopped on. Thank you.